So our relationship at first, it was good, but I remember one time we were walking to the park and we came back, <laughs> we had sat down on the curb together and Laura looked at me and she was like, you don't like to sit next to people, do you? And I go like, why, you know, why do you say that? And she goes, because you always leave a seat in between, no matter, no matter where we go, if we're on the ferry, like she'll sit here, a seat, and then it'll be me. And I looked at her and I was like, that is a very good observation, but I don't, I don't mean to do it on purpose, it's just me. Me and Mal first met in person in our dorm room in Harborview. She, I, I went up there first, I got there first, and we, we've been texting a little bit before then. And I remember she came up with her family and she was like, hi, like big smile, gave me a hug instantly. I didn't have a word to, I didn't have a chance to get a word out before she gave me a big hug and I was like, okay, this girl's really friendly. Yeah, I mean, it was funny because I took out a pair of Ugg boots and I put them in my um, closet. And she looked at me, she goes, what size do you wear? And I go, I wear 10. She goes, oh my goodness, like I'm gonna be able to wear your Uggs. And instantly I just knew right then and there, like, okay, we're gonna have to have some kind of connection because she's gonna wanna borrow my shoes. So my mindset of going into my freshman year of college outside of Maryland, um, I was nervous at first, definitely. But at that point in time, we had a good group of seniors that just took me under their wing and, and uh, walked me through it. I remember we were playing a pickup game and um, I had a wide open three and I didn't take it. And the senior pulled me to the side and she goes, what's wrong with you, you take that shot. And I, I felt like honored at that point because the senior is looking at the freshman saying, you take that shot if you're open. So, and that's when, I, that's when my mindset had changed as I came in to help ch uh, change the program and that's what I wanted to do. Well, I remember we had some sort of punishment running like 17s or something and before we even started, she just dropped on the floor and everyone heard something. I was on the other end of the court, but I heard it and everyone just looked and she was just face down on the floor. I woke up and all the trainers were in my face and they had the paddles out and instantly just because I'm nervous and I'm scared, I just start crying and they said while I was out for a little bit, I seized, I started seizing a little bit and um, that's when the whole process of going to the doctor and getting checked happened. From that point on, it was just a lot of doctor's appointments, a lot of trips to the hospital to see what was going on. And I remember she couldn't play after that, and it was a big question on whether she was gonna play again. Uh, Laura's support was strong. We were the only two freshmen there, so we kind of knew at the beginning it was just all we had was each other. So I had her back and she had mine. And I, there were some nights where I would just cry and she would just be there. And, I mean, she wouldn't, wouldn't really know what to say, but just her being there, it, it made the difference. It, I mean, it still happens sometimes. Uh, junior year, I think we played, or sophomore year, I'm sorry, we played Villanova, and that was when I finally, like, it just set in that I wasn't gonna play. It was a scrimmage, we scrimmage Villanova, and I cried for like three hours after that game. And I looked to my right side, and, and there was more, like, comfort in me telling me, like, I don't know what you're going through, but I, I know you're gonna be okay. It was really emotional, not a, especially on her, but, for other people too. I'm not a like open person to people, so she saw things that other people didn't see because I was in the comfort of my room. Like normally people won't see me crying out in public, and because I knew that we had that trust, like she didn't go back and tell anyone, like you know, Mel was crying last night. I think we should go do this. She let me stay to myself, and she helped me when she needed to. She never uh, overstepped her boundaries with helping, and I, we just it just was an instant trust after that because I could trust it. I could say what I wanted to say, I could cry if I needed to cry, and it would stay within whatever room that we were in. And when I first started to be a manager, I was just strictly a manager. Um, as the years came by and as Coach Shemiano came, she promoted me, I guess you could say, and um, my junior year, she told me I could have first seat on the bench, so that was like, a big thing for me. And then this previous year, she looked at me and she said, um, I want you to be captain with Laura. And she goes, I mean, you, that means you get to walk out and shake hands at the beginning of the game. I'm, I'm almost in tears at this point. I'm like, this, this is an honor. And even now, she, I guess, promoted me again, you could say, because she has the girls call me Coach Mel or Coach Williamson. And she really considers me on staff. Like she won't put me in a group with the other managers. She'll be like, if you're 
you're here with, with us. So I really want you to get the full experience out of this. And there's no words to say, like, even how I feel when she told me. She was like, no, you're like your coach now, now. And you get first seat on the bench. Like, it's, it, I don't have any words for it.